Boxing King Media in association with Box Row. Come down to the Steel City Gym today to see Sonny and Thomas. Uh, Thomas, we spoke uh, uh, a few weeks ago and we kind of touched on you know, your background and your history. Uh, I don't normally do these type of interviews, but I, I do like to know about boxers and I want the fans to know your story because I think you've got some like, you've got a bit of a crazy backstory and how you've ended up in the UK. Uh, would I be right in saying that? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind. Yes. I don't mind to talk about my story. So let's, let's let the fans know a little bit about yourself. So obviously for now, the, the people that don't know, you're managed by Sonny. Yeah? Show Savers. Show Savers. Show Savers, the company that's called Show Savers. So Thomas, obviously you've got Cameroonian background. Uh, you, you brought up in Cameroon. So just for the fans who, who've got no knowledge of Cameroon, just tell them briefly about, you know, what's it like growing up in Cameroon? What, what kind of conditions did you grow up in? Um, yeah, to be honest, um, uh, it's very, Cameroon is like country, like every, every country, just like uh, the, <clears throat> it depends where you grow up, it, it depends it depend where you grow up and uh, it depends your family, stuff like that. Um, for, for my, for my story, I think my story is a bit diff different because uh, I came in family where we was very, I came about, was born definitely in the village where it's like jungle, uh, stuff like that, very, very, uh, no, far to the town. And uh, people like that is very difficult to, you know, come, to become something, you know. A little opportunity. Right? little opportunity, and uh, yeah. Uh, so what was your home like? And if you describe your home, like over here, you, know, you have like a room downstairs, you have two bedrooms upstairs. So what was your home like in Cameroon? Yeah, uh, uh, you know, you have to know first, I was, I start from uh, where I was born. I was born in a village, it's a proper village, you see, like, uh, uh, it's a proper home, but it was made no by... No by brick, sir. No by brick. Mud. Mud, yeah. Yeah. Uh, definitely, like, village, you see, you know that you're in a village, and you count the, <laughs> uh, you count the car, every day when you see the car, you see the kid, they decided to see the car because the car don't come in every, every day. Uh, yeah, stuff like that. <clears throat> uh, yeah, the story, my story is just be difficult because uh, where, where, when I was born, I didn't know my dad. I would grow up with my granddad who was everything for me. Um, yeah, and I, I was with him and I would start from age. Since I was little, I grew up with my grandparents, my mom, my granddad. Uh, they definitely teach me everything. So even I started to find difficult when my dad, when my granddad did. Then I started to find very difficult okay. because he's who was doing everything for me. Uh, I was do when I was little. Everything I know, I didn't go to. I was going to school for little from age. Uh, Five to ten, I was going to school with my grandparents. So, was your grandparents? Was your mum part of your life as well growing up? Yeah, my grandmom left me with my grandparents. Yeah, oh, right. she was in the town. Okay, so your grandfather, your grandparents looked after you. So, you know, like, what was your grandparents' home like? Was it like, you know, you walk in? Is it how many rooms was there? Is it just like one big room and then everybody sleeps on the floor? And no, 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 no. My grandparents, my granddad, they they very big house. Okay, nine. Nine bedroom, oh, wow. very very big. Um, um, just, but it was just no look nice, you know. Very big. We have a. My grandmother was very good, very strong man. He was working, you know, uh, agriculture. He was good uh, agriculture, going the forest, make a cacao it, you know, cacao it. Yeah, yeah. You know what cacao it? Is that like a fruit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. fruit. Oh, okay. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Oh. So that we. That's my dad was make it, so he was very good for that. Uh, but everything changed when he did, and he did when I was very little. So this life become very difficult. I supposed to look after my mom, my grandma. So how did you get by, like money wise? You know, because I'm guessing at some point you need to start earning money to you know to feed yourself and your family. Because in them sort of countries, people start working really young, don't they? So no, I start I start to do the thing, and my that age. You know, go in the forest and walk. The same thing my dad was working and the age before, I think I was 12, when my granddad, 
I started to do, take the place my granddad was doing, work in the forest, in jungle. Uh, grab, and if I have an animal, I come and sell to, to I sell, and then I have small money I can give so to my... So you was like hustling in the jungle? That's what we call it, hustling. You're like buying, selling, moving things about. Yeah, yeah. But you're moving animals about. Animal, yeah. buy a small animal, can sell maybe five pounds, two yeah. pounds, three pounds. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. I have money I give to. That is good money okay. for in Cameroon. So from, from that, where did your boxing journey start? So when did you step into a boxing? Where, how do you start boxing in Cameroon? Yeah. In the middle of a jungle? So when I, start to, when I was in a village, I started to become very naughty boy, very naughty fighting and uh, very, 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 very thing, a lot of naughty things I was doing in the village, fighting, drinking, smoking, and the age 13, 14, I was doing that stuff. So uh, then it would become, I would become very worse, you know, like, uh, and then my mom, when my mom hear that, she come pick me in the village. She come pick me in the village, and then I went back in the town. She took me to the town. From that, I start to... I was still doing, like, uh, football, because I was very good in football, I was playing football. Um, so one day, boxing, I didn't even know one day I would know about sport, uh, boxing. Only thing it was my mind was football. So one day, one of my friends was going to resist in a boxing gym. I was I have my shows, to, football shows. I was supposed to go uh, the box um, and in, in, in stadium to play. And that guy said, "Please, can you take me first uh, in the boxing gym to register, and then uh, you go yours later." So we went there together. Uh, I remember when you saw I saw little guys. They was training. <coughs> they was training. It was girl, even the girl. They was there. I said, oh, I really enjoy the gym. And the, train, the trainer said to me, why your, your friend you don't want to join the, the gym? I said to him first, I don't want it. Then, when they finished the training, and then I said, oh, I like it. And the reason I like it was that day I remember they was doing, uh, they do, you know, like uh, uh, sparring. Yeah, yeah. They do sparring, and then I see little kid. You know, similar like me, they was fighting at the tall guy. I said, oh, the idea coming in my mind, I said, listen, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to learn how to be strong. Because the reason I have this, I, I have the idea, it was, you know, when I was playing football, I was very fast, I was very good. People was hurt me. And I said, listen, if you teach, if you learn how to become strong, here, then I will go back to football. <laughs> so if someone do something to me, I can hurt him. Then I said, listen, I'm going to lie, I'm going to start to, I'm come next tomorrow, start to learn how to do, to, be, to do boxing. From that, um, yeah, is where my journey start in boxing. So where did that take you, like in short, where did you go from there to the Cameroonian, like national amateur setup? Yeah, the, I was just looking, like, because the guy who, show, who bring me there, my friend who show me, who bring me there, I remember we do three, it was two weeks together, he was doing every day. The third week, the guy stopped. But me, I was just continuing. And, and the trainer, he said, ah, that guy is speaking very quick. I was speaking the thing they were showing me very, very quick, you know? Because I was determined to be, to learn how to be strong, to go back, to go back, play football. That was my mind. So after a couple of months, after, after a couple of months, uh, the coach just like me, say, yo, you're going to be boxing. And boxing can change your life because everyone know my story, what I was doing, you know. It was small town. Everyone know <laughs> <laughs> that I was naughty. I was very naughty boy. And you only said naughty boy, like, the, there's different meanings to being naughty. So what, what kind of things naughty, did you Naughty, like, you know, else? yeah, to be honest, you know, I, when the, I was telling because the Cameroonian police can't do nothing now, so I'm just curious to know about what kind <laughs> yeah, of yeah, you story. Got, got when you say there. naughty, you know, naughty, I was living, you know, like homeless. Mm -hmm. I was like a homeless kid mm -hmm. because I, would, I was going to see my mom maybe once a week. I was going to see my mom maybe once a week, and uh, at that age, I had to fight to survive, do everything I can. Like, uh, <laughs> if you see someone, like, uh, do small. 
the good for me, I didn't do something bad to uh, snap someone. No, you didn't snap a No, but if but stealing, then no, no, no. no, no, no just, just, I was just doing like um, uh, fighting, smoking law. Yeah, smoking law. Doing too, law. Young, huh? too young, yeah. too young. Yeah. Uh, okay. This fighting was just law. I was doing law. And you know your training equipment. Uh, what, what, how did you fund having training equipment like boxing gloves? Because I can't imagine you no, would no, have no. had like. I think I did. I didn't have it for one year. I didn't have it. the first time. I the first time I saw the gloves. The first time I saw the glove, I was really scared. You know, really scared to work. I was excited to see the gloves. So what, what did you train? What did you put on your hands in when you was like boxing? Oh, uh, you know the the first one you, you the wrap wraps. the hand hand wraps yeah yeah the white one you, you, oh, the, yeah, boxing, the bandage, the bandage. Wow. I was this is the first one me I was I was using that and must have been amazing that yeah the glove on for the first time that's the first time and oh the first and the sec because I do the, you know uh, Cameroon have a the reg, regional regional I won the regional after six weeks mm -hmm. after regional. And then uh, I get qualification to national uh, um, competition. From that competition, it was the first time. Uh, the regional one, we don't have a ring. Yeah. We no don't ring. Have no ring. It was just like <laughs> we don't have a ring that time. I remember you just put the the way, just put the finger. We in the middle or people they turn around. People outside. In, inside and you you fall it that yeah. I've That's seen it. I've seen professional fights in, in Africa. Yeah. be conducted like yeah. that as well. People uh, uh, make uh, the turn it in a circle. Yeah. You, know, you guys to you three, you and uh, your Poland in the middle and the referee. So it's uh, like that. That's what I was doing. So moving on from that, you get selected for the Cameroon national team. Mm -hmm. You have this crazy opportunity to come to London. So from describing your background there, you know, being brought up in that sort of environment, jungle, you know, hustling away on the streets, selling animals and smoking, getting drunk. Also went to 2008 as well, didn't you know? What? You were two times Olympian. Yeah, you were two times, times Olympian, yeah. yeah. So, th that sort of opportunity just to pop up on yourself, you know, you've obviously been in two Olympics. Um, just tell me about the 20, uh, 2008 one. You know, when you, when you find out, they told you, right, Thomas, you're going to the Olympics. No, no, you know, before I get Olympic, it was, you know, I get a lot of competition before. I went to Australia for I think Commonwealth. This is a, I think it's a, what was it like for you to, to, to look out to these sort of countries? You know, it was you know I, I would just say everything was just the, my first competition, international competition I do. It was uh, Gabon, you know, African. Gabon, yeah. yeah Gabon, and then f after Gabon, I went to um, Morocco, Morocco. F after Morocco, and then I went to Australia. It was you know you come from where I came from, like Africa jungle. I can say like uh, we. We even uh, see the car. It was it's strange for me. Everything yeah. was totally strange for me. Uh, who paid for like your travel and stuff? That out? time it was you know the national the government because that is national team. Only national team, the government. And did you get paid as well? Sometimes, sometimes, but it's very less. What, what kind of money? Like if you compare to English pounds. Mm, I remember my first competition uh, in Gabon. I had uh, like. Uh, I got silver, silver medal. I get like uh, two, two, two hundred pound. Two hundred pound. And how many fights did you have to have to get two hundred uh, pound? Three fight. Three fights. Okay. Yeah, get three fight. So you put your life on the line. They give you two hundred pound. Yeah, this is my first. Well, for me, <coughs> pardon. <coughs> For that me, it was been a lot of money though, 200 pounds in Cameroon. In Cameroon, it was very big money for me mm. and my age. Yeah. And my age. <coughs> What, so, what did you do with that two hundred pound before you move on? Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, I'm was, hoping you're not going to say you smoked. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I start to calm, detail, calm down. One, I realized that boy box it can change my life. Mm -hmm. You know, you seen uh, the opportunity. Yes, you know? and the coach who was I was talking like my dad, he was look after me. So, uh, I gave that money to my mom. To be honest, I gave the money my mom, and something you have to my mom didn't want me to do boxing. So one same as my mom. Yeah. See, nothing changes. A lot it's of things. When change, I bring, you know, after the national team, I bring. I remember I have like a 15, 15, 15, 15 pound. I give thirty pound to my mom. Oh, my mom, she was very surprised. I say, oh, it's the first time my mom left me. Say, okay, can go do boxing. 
you know. So after that competition, in, in international competition, when I finish, and then I bring like two, I give her 550. She was very surprised, and she blessed me everything like that. And um, yeah, I give that money to my mom. But the life just has start to become, you know, enjoy. You know, yeah, yeah, just get 17. I think I was 17, something like that. 17, nearly 18. So I start to be um, do enjoy life, <laughs> yeah. enjoy life, enjoy life, enjoy life. Yeah. So the 2008 Olympics. So you know, based on where you got to, what, what did you get paid for that when you walked away back home? Um, when you get qualification, because you don't just go in the uh, Olympic like that, you know, qualify is a, is a big tournament. Hard to qualify. Very, very, very hard like tournament Cameroon. in Cameroon, yeah. In Africa, it's a very hard tournament. Um, that, uh, that time I was number one in Africa, you have to know. I was number one in Africa, so I have my qualification very easy. And um, after that, we went to the problem. You just what that's why I, would, I I feel very, I feel very very bad to be honest with my old country because I know that level. We in 2008, I was in the ranking, the world ranking. I think I was number two in the mm. world ranking. So for me, I knew I was supposed to have a medal in Olympic, but. The government did give me opportunity. You know that level, you can't just go and like find someone like Sony. You come like you don't have a good sparring. You have, don't have don't training was good because I have a good trainer, but no practical like uh, no sparring partner. No sparring partner, no uh, equipment, no, no equipment, nothing. That's, this is uh, the stuff. So, so you did a lot considering what what you work what you were working with. You didn't have a lot to work with, but you you, you did pretty well. Yeah, just just because my heart, not yeah. because I was, not because I had that stuff. Because yeah. if I had that stuff, I should be should do more better. Because you, you wanted to get out of that mm. that jungle, basically. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, officially after that, uh, I remember when we done when I came back from, uh, 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 you was one tournament and uh, uh, I can't remember the country was China before Olympic. I got a silver medal in the world, world title, a world competition. And after that, when we came back, it, I was already qualified for Olympic. So uh, the government, before the Olympic, I have only four week camp. Imagine someone go to Olympic, you have only four week camp in Cameroon. You can't do nothing. So I have, I win the first fight, the second fight I lost. In, uh, and then I came back. This is where everything start. Because when I came back, the government, everything the government said to me, they said, no, see, you have a po you have a possibility to do something in a high level. What we're going to do to you, we're going to give you uh, more opportunity to go like, uh, to go prepare, to go get preparation somewhere mm -hmm. in the country, in Europe, and blah, blah, blah. But they never do that. Up to when I get another qualification. So after getting, when I get another qualification, I was already uh, captain of the team. So I know my role. I know what I have to uh, got when I only qualify in Olympic. So I thought to all my guys, what we support you have. So officer, you know, in my country, um, they don't like when you people in uh, the government. Well, you, you know, speak up against it. Yeah, you don't like when you challenge them. Yeah, they don't like when you challenge them. So, and then from that, they they didn't like the way I was I was I was uh, talking to them. They don't like. They didn't like the way I, everything I was said to them. You know. He was doing this because he was the captain of the team. Yeah, right? I was speaking to them because I was capit uh, captain. Okay. And then I know I was already, I was the order of the team. Mm. So I have more experience for the other one. So mm. I know what we support you on. Yeah. So he said, did you like it? So we then moved towards 2012. You get the opportunity that you know you're coming to London. Mm. So obviously we'll get to what happened when you got to London. But you know, before you came, did you already plan, pre-plan, to yourself like when I get here I'm gonna do the Olympics then I, and then I'm, I'm disappearing I'm, I'm staying in the UK I'm no, not going no, back no 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 at no. all because uh, you know I have a 
Because that's what the fans think, you know, when they read about his, the people yeah, that yeah, know that's, his story. They everyone think. think. It was breaking news, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah everyone, everyone think that, you know, if this I was said, that small money I was, as we, I was winning every year in Africa, I have like a four competition in tournament Africa. Normally the government had to pay you like uh, 4,000. 4,000 every gold medal. When you have a gold medal, this is the go what the government had to pay you. But sometimes they was paying, you know, sometimes they, they don't. Or they can pay late. But on my level, I have a very good, I was very lucky, like every competition I was doing, and I won the gold medal. So that allowed me to have a very, no very good life, but yeah. good life. So the reasons behind it are because you wasn't being paid right, and mm. you, you felt like they didn't respect, you know, and give you the time to prepare for these tournaments. So the reason that you left was the money mainly and the fact that you weren't treated right, yeah? No, 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 yeah. it's, not, it's not just about the money, it's mm. about my, uh, what I mean, security. Yeah. Because, you know, one, the reason I, I stayed in this country it was because I was just scared to going back. Because uh, the problem I have with the government, I know what uh, those people are supposed to do to me. That's why. Has I anything was, happened to somebody before? Yeah, like, there's a lot what, of people. Kind of things? Like they send you in a prison, and in a prison, they have a power to kill you, to do something very bad to you. Yeah. Maybe uh, they put very, very bad punishment. You've been in prison, prison before? In me, Cameroon? no, no, no. <laughs> no, but with police, I have like so a shoe with police uh, stuff, but no prison. So is your fear of knowing if I go back? Because you've challenged what they've done, you can end up in prison and yeah. basically vanish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then uh, even my boxing, I should not do boxing anymore. Okay. That is the stuff definitely make me to decide to to stay here. So we're in the UK. Let's take go to the 2012 uh, Olympics now. So in that time you was here, obviously you had a few fights as well. At what point did you say to yourself, like, fuck this, I'm staying here, I'm not going back? Because like, obviously there was you and a few other guys as well. So the whole team, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So did you guys all get together, have a meeting? You know, tell me about the plan. How? No, no, no. The plan it was, plan. you know, when we went, we have to know when we came here. Uh, the government. This is the story from uh, Cameroon. Normally, you know, when you get qualification. For me, I said to the government, I don't want to go in the, uh, the competition, like uh, holiday. I don't want to go holiday just to relax or go just. She said, no, I went to holiday. I want to go win the, the, the medal. I want to win the medal in Olympic. Just I want, I want you to give us, uh, allow you to have a opportunity to get good preparation, yeah? And they said, okay, everything is done. We're gonna do it. Next week, we're supposed to do, I think, two or three uh, different countries, Cuba, or Italy and then the last one supposed to be in the UK. So normally we got a qualification, I can't remember the month, but we're supposed to do one month, one month every country. So for three months we're supposed to be outside, but they didn't. So the last competition, the, 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 the one the first uh, camp finished in, um, in uh, Cuba, we were the one because we supposed to start in Cuba. When that one finished, they did finish. So and then the Italia one start again. They didn't send us. And the government. Did you go to Cuba? No, we didn't. Oh, didn't we did. We didn't go nowhere. We were stay in Cameroon. And then the false, false promises. Then false promises. Yeah. And then the last, the second one start in Italy. They start again. That one for four weeks. We did it. They said no. Don't worry. We go next week. You go next week, we go next week, we still there. Me, I was in my home, everyone was, but we were still training, you know? So, I think one week, no, it was the week the camp was supposed to finish in Italy. They said, no, Thomas, get all your guy, you are, you are coming tomorrow. I said, where, if you do for four days, the camp? I said, no, I prefer to talk to my guys, we are not going anywhere, because they took the money, the, the problem is, they signed the, <coughs> and uh, you know, federation. So, so for what you're saying, I'm, I'm understanding this right. So the, the people who run the boxing team, they've, they'll take the money saying that they're going to take the fighters X, Y, and Z different countries. They already take. 
Yeah, so they already they took the money, money but they didn't take you anywhere and yeah. they pocketed the money. They pocketed the money. Mm -hmm. okay. They get the funding. Yeah. And but they're not spending the funding this, on the fighters. Yeah. Okay, that's so, interesting, that. And then I said to I said to my guys, we, we are not going anyway. Better we wait the last one. The but last one definitely they will send us because it's the way the uh, Olympic gonna happen. Okay. That, that's interesting. And then when we came, when we came we went to Cardiff. Mm. So nobody because when they said to us, we are going to Italy, I said to guys, nobody move. We are not going anyway. There was less than me, everyone in my team. I was the little, yeah, but mm -hmm. <laughs> there was less than me because I was the captain. I was, and then even the coach, it was someone who's very good. Um, he said, you too much is all right. Better to wait uh, on the other the, all the, all the camp, all the, all the one starter in... And, uh, what they call the county um, in UK? Okay. Better to wait that one. Cardiff, yeah, it was in Cardiff, so better to wait that one. So, so I, I got you. I can completely understand your reasons now. So you wanted to challenge the fact that they're not paying, they're not taking you guys abroad, and they're taking all this funding. The funding's not being spent on the fighters. So you knew if you challenge that, you're going to end up in Cam in a Cameroonian prison. And you're not going to be allowed out, and then anything could happen to you. So when you got here, you, you had to make a decision. Obviously, for your this own is, personal safety. You know, this is it was you know before that you know when the first one they said and then when when I refuse, you know the government all the, I would when you refuse to go to Italy. Italy, yeah, yeah. and then they convoke halls and um, all of them, you know, they are, you know, the federation that like, can be at uh, football, mm. all of the, those presidents they yeah. convoke halls yeah. and the ministries uh, sp sport of. Uh, is that, Minister. Minister, yeah. They yeah. convoke us there yeah. and they try to uh, tell us to go. I say, no, definitely we are not going. We better to go with the one we are waiting. Okay. Then when we came, nobody of them in the, mini uh, the, the federation or the minister come to visit us when we was in the camp. So nobody. Everything become worse. When you was in the UK? Yeah, when I was in Cardiff. So if, if you go to the point where, you know, uh, where you effectively ran away from, you know, the, the setup and decided to go your own way. But w which city was that in? Was that in Cardiff or was that it in? Would have been London. Wouldn't would have been London, wasn't it? Were you, where? When? Uh, when so, you, so you went just to, sorry, just to clear. You went to, you went to Cardiff about a month before the Olympics, mm -hmm. and then you, you were meant to train there. If you can you train, then go to London. You go to London, yeah, yeah. yeah. So well, you was in London when when you decided to. Yeah. To, the so, problem is. So, so tell me about that uh, bit in London. So. Yeah, that's this. this this is why you people have to understand. Okay. So when you come to Olympic, you not just you if you you not come just to fight. You sometimes you come to enjoy. Yeah. If we, all of my all of our horse, we was five, yeah. So what happened is, I remember my brother. Is is the first who get beat. And what the federal, what the the people of uh, our team, like uh, the me, Federation said, they want his passport and he take it, when you lose, if you lose the fight, take your, take, take your passport and they send you straight away in Cameroon, so you don't even enjoy the competition, you don't... You back Is that like around. a punishment? Yeah, like punishment, so when I, I heard that... Probably say you can't you understand? It, so yeah. like passport mm -hmm. So when they said that they want you to send my brother and the other one, Christian, they, they took his passport, I said, listen, they want you to take the passport. They come to me, say Thomas, we are the, 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 the they convoke us. They, they want our passport. I said, listen, I will go talk to them. So I sought, I, I, I spoke to them. I say, listen, if and me, I was already I support you for the next day. I said, if you you send these those people in Cameroon, who are going to support me? We need to, we are team. We need to be together. We need to support, encourage uh, other. So I promised them, I said, listen, like that is no good. If you send them, I don't like it. But I promise what I'm going, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all of them passport, I'm going to keep the passport. When we finish the competition, I will give you the passport. So, because the problem become worse. That's why when we, we finish the, that meeting, and then I, we I make, I convoke the meeting with all of the guys, is that the day we decide, Together, say so you see the thing become very, very, very bad for us, and uh, we always care at moment. 
because me, I don't know if you, like if you, they sent to Abdon in Cameroon now or Kisia. I don't know what happened to them. You what could, it was. You could disappear. So better, what are we gonna do? We had to stay very close together and stuff like that. We would decide after the competition. So obviously, one my last fight. Uh, one I one with uh, Paddy Band, huh? Band yeah. yeah. I was there. I was I was at the Olympics. Yeah, Paddy Band. I know. I've seen your pictures. Yeah, after that, that compete, after that fight, still look the same. <laughs> after that fight, then we decide we decide to live together. I said we are not going back. So tell us about that because people like this sort of stuff. Um, in fact, before you do that, 